must say, the Mortal Kombat animated universe is developing quite nicely. Battle of the Realms feels all over the place, attempting to tell too many stories at once and not doing any of them justice. The movie does have problems that are hard to ignore, but I'm not going to let those problems make me ignore the good things about this movie. To summarize exactly how bad this film is, somehow Mortal Kombat 2021 was not the worst MK movie released in 2021. Mortal Kombat lore is filled to the brim with heroes and villains, so there's no shortage of possibilities for the future of this animated series. I'm not somebody coming from a place of hate at all. In fact, as a person, I go out of my way to almost never use that word. It's a very strong word, but... I think I did hate this movie. Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms is the sequel to the highly acclaimed movie Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. On the 1st of July, Warner Brothers released the first trailer, and fans were super hyped. Then came the 31st of August, the release date of the movie, and fans were very very mixed. I still liked it. Don't get it twisted. Why is this plot so bloated? Why is so much happening? And it's without question a clusterfuck in every sense of the word. However, don't let that deter you from even gonna watch. Hold it! He copied my whole fucking flow! Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar! Some claim that it was still good but with some flaws, while others claim it's a complete mess and doesn't live up to the first. So what did I think of the movie? Well, We've got around 80 minutes of opinions to go through, so that bicycle kick right into Battle of the Realms. We start the movie with Ultra Instinct Shaggy, which somehow became the most popular thing to come out from this movie. Prodigies in odd places indeed. Then the movie begins with a flashback to Baby Liu Kang, as we see his parents getting murdered by Tarkatans, and just as Baby Kang is about to be bored, Raiden shows up right on time to save the baby. Great timing, as usual. Have I arrived too late? You're back in the nick of time. Raiden beats the shit out of them all and saves baby gang. What was that whip sound effect just then? Tell him he was loved. By who? Loved by who, woman? This is so frustrating. She just gave me this baby and she didn't even say who loves him. Then Raiden the baby snatcher leaves. We cut to present time, where an all-out invasion begins at the Wuxi Academy. Earthrealm has their Shaolin monks, while Outworld has thousands of Tarkatans and demons. Wait. The Netherrealm demon warriors? But I thought Netherrealm betrayed Outworld when Guan Chi poisoned Shang Tsung's drink. Perhaps they didn't get the memo? Outworld appreciates the Netherrealm army you have given us, Shinnok. For the glory of Outworld, I serve for the pleasure of Shao Kahn. By the way, just curious, how did Quan Chi die? Oh, uh, um... Did it perhaps have anything to do with, oh, uh, I don't know. The betrayal of Outworld and the declaration of war between our realms. What? No. He, um, uh, he, he, uh, accidentally slipped some poison into his own drink. Anyways, thanks for the demons, bye! And Kung Lao joins the battle, voiced by Matthew King. I am Kung Lao, descendant of the great Kung Lao. Who also did the voice of Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat 11. So to see him come back and not voice Liu Kang here does feel a bit weird. Kung Lao shows some cool moves, then he faces off against a tormentor. Things aren't going too well for him. And just as Kung Lao is about to be defeated, How lucky for you. Not only was he saved by the chopper, somehow, somehow the chopper completely misses him and only hits the monster. Even the creature's hand was taken clean off. Kung Leo is very lucky. Perhaps this, this is, is a moment, moment his luck ran out. out. Then Stryker and Jax with new metal arm show up. Stryker is reprised by Matthew Mercer, who also played him in Mortal Kombat 9. I'm your Huckleberry. Where are they? Where do you think? Come on now, this background looks fucking abysmal. Then we cut to Katana and friends. General. What is it? Spit it out. Excuse me, princess. Excuse I'm pretty sure he was referring to General Reiko. Don't take away one of his only character traits. Then everyone's favorite Johnny Cage shows up. 
I usually leave this sort of thing up to my agent, but I fire yes. He tries negotiating with them, but they don't care. I don't care! Because they just want to kill this annoying brat. Sonya saves his ass, and an all-out brawl begins. Die. Didn't I kill you? So now I'm going to go off with the longest most unnecessary tangent in this review. And it's about the Baraka and Reptile situation. Earlier this year, an interview came out asking whether the Tarkatin and Saurian from Scorpion's Revenge were Baraka and Reptile. And Jeremy, the writer of the movie, pretty much denies it. Can you confirm yeah. whether or not that's supposed to be Baraka? I don't think it's Baraka. I think it's just one of the race of them. Mm -hmm. So okay. what about Sonya with uh, Sorry. Same with that. He even emphasizes this again in the director's commentary in Battle of the Realms. People ask me about the Tarkatan with Reptile. Like, are these, is that the actual one or is that not the actual one? And I'm like, oh gosh, this is egregious. <laughs> None of these. In my head canon, none of these are uh, Baraka. Upon hearing this information, I was happy and also annoyed. Happy cause we might see them again in the future and be better represented and annoyed because that was clearly Baraka and Reptile. I'm sure 99% of your audience thought that was too. They look exactly like them, wear the exact same costumes they did in Mortal Kombat X and use the same moves. Yet they are just some random Tarkatin and Lizard Man. That's like if I said this isn't Kitana, because they never refer to her by name. So she is just some random Adenian lady who can use fans. But Sanic, Kitana's name was in the credits, unlike Baraka and Reptile who aren't. Ho? Oh. Now we're resorting to using the unreliable credits they're notorious for getting wrong? Fine then. As long as there's a name drop. Then you'll be happy, right? Then check out what I found in the special features of Scorpion's Revenge. This is 4K! How did they get you in 4K? This statement is definitely a retcon to bring Baraka and Reptile back. But again, I'm happy to see them get a second chance. I think the characters, if they're the actual characters from the game, should get a, a, probably a little more, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember before Battle of the Realms, I theorized what the real Baraka and Reptile would look like. Baraka would probably look more like his classic design. Instead of a brown tank top, it'll go back to looking white. Same goes for Reptile. He'll look more like his classic design, but also keep more of his lizard man features. So a combination of both. Looking more like this. You can't stop the sexy reptile. Ha 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 ha. Anyways, the movie came out, and reptile ain't in it. Okay, fine. Let's not have Shang Tsung's personal bodyguard show up for the final tournament. But at least Baraka showed up, and he looks identical to how he looked in Scorpion's Revenge. Seriously? If you're telling me this isn't Baraka and this is Baraka, then maybe differentiate their design. What kind of fool do you take me for? He's Baraka. He's Baraka. Yours Baraka. I'm Baraka. Bird. Are there any others Baraka? I should know about. Meow. I guess that also means that the real reptile will look just like he did in Scorpion's Revenge. Anyways, let me get back on track. Yeah. Whoa! Little help here. Little help. The two of you can't hope to defeat Shao Kahn's army. Who said anything about two? If it was just two of us, well. I mean, that would be stupid. Only two against a couple of thousands? Yeah, that's crazy. Four, now you all don't stand a chance. I like how these four just stand there for who knows how long and take the kick like bowling pins. And then we continue the fight. Oh, you can then Shao Kahn appears. Thanos. Oh, he's gonna kill Johnny Cage immediately again. And Liu Kang tries to fight him, and instantly loses. Holy fuck balls. Shao Kahn is packing meat down there. It's making Luigi jealous. An impressive cock. Shao Kahn proposes a final tournament, and Raiden accepts, while everyone else objects. Raiden seems very determined on this decision. Personally, I feel like it would be smarter to train for another year, or look for more fighters. But perhaps Raiden believes that if he doesn't accept now, Shao Kahn won't give them another chance. Some people don't like this war scene, because it's something that's not supposed to happen until MK3. However, this actually does happen in MK2 and MK9. 
Outworld sends Tarkatans to attack the Shaolin Temple, forcing them to join the tournament. Shang Tsung has made it clear that Earthrealm will be under constant threat unless I agree to a new tournament. If the tournament does this once a generation and they've won, why can they invade? And this is how they described it to me, is that if they win the 10 tournaments and they can merge realms, right. they can attack any time. The difference in this movie, however, is that Raiden decides to join the tournament instead of being threatened. He doesn't want this to go on. He doesn't want more tournaments. And honestly, I kind of like this more than how MK2 and MK9 do it. Though I will say, I would prefer Sonya being captured. I think having Johnny and Jax trying to save Sonya is a better character arc than Johnny learning about consent. Overall, despite my nitpicks, I actually quite like this intro. It's fun. It's gory. New characters showing their moves, setting up the plot of the tournament. It's all quite great. However, there is one concerning point I'd like to point out. And it's in the director's commentary. You know, I'm trying to think economically, and then Rick decides to spend all the money right here. <laughs> we then cut to Hanzo taking his son back to the Shirai Ryu village. You can tell they are Shirai Ryu because yellow reminds me of Age of Empires people. Then it turns out to all be a dream, and he wakes up in Netherrealm. Apparently Shang Tsung's island and Netherrealm are connected. It is an odd island in that it's on Earth, but it has essentially like one foot in Netherrealm. Which is probably why Scorpion ended up here. Then Shinnok shows up and gives us a very confusing explanation to the key. Your soul, it has something I need. It was with you when you perished on the island. You and the key are one. My soldiers will escort you to Earthrealm, to the Temple of Elements. You will open the gates and bring me what's inside. First off, how are you here Shinnok? I thought you were imprisoned. I have two theories on this. Number one, he was never imprisoned, and he was taking a nice vacation in Hawaii. The second theory is he was imprisoned in the key, and when Scorpion fused with the key, it released Shinnok. My other question is, in Scorpion's revenge, the key was supposed to unlock Shinnok from imprisonment. My master Shinnok was unjustly imprisoned. This is the key to his release. However, in this movie, it's to unlock the gates of the Temple of Elements, where Quan Chi and Shang Tsung lie to. This. He's been in prison for a reason, Quan Chi. Or maybe this key can do both. It can imprison Shinnok and open the temple gates. It's his Swiss Army knife key. In the next movie, this key will be able to retcon Sindel evil. Shinnok politely asks Scorpion for help. I will flay you alive until you perish. And Scorpion says no. no. Guys, they killed off Reptile again. Shinnok then asks his army to chase after him. But master, he has escaped us before. Then find me someone who can do it for you. I absolutely love how out of all these savage creatures, there is a demon who is polite and diplomatic enough to hire assassins. Give Demon 1 his own solo movie. Oh, you poor poor thing. Then we cut to the Lin Kui Palace. As we see Qi Liang and Smoke have a sparring match. Nothing much to add, it's just a pretty sweet fight. Smoke then gives him the mask, but Qi Liang refuses. No, not yet. Funny thing though, he does take the mask off screen. Smoke later on gets captured, and we see Qi Liang with the mask, so I guess Qi Liang is just being at some dairy here. The Grandmaster requires your presence. Hey, it's Matthew King again. Thankfully. I got my second wind. And they go meet the Grandmaster. I don't even know who you- The Grandmaster is voiced by Paul Nakorchi, and he sounds just like Hanzo from Overwatch. How predictable. The Grandmaster explains they've been hired to capture a very dangerous person. Our target is a member of the Shirai Ryu. The Shirai Ryu are dead. Way to butcher the pronunciation right as your master said it correct first. The Shirai Ryu- At least I have an excuse to pronounce Shirai Ryu and Lin Kui wrong. Their target is Scorpion. Hanzo wants to catch Hanzo. I will find him and kill him for my clan. For my brother. How do you know this? I'm pretty sure only Shang Tsung and the heroes escape the island. Did you ask Sonya or something? Then the Grandmaster says he's going to turn Qi Liang and Smoke into robots. A mortal body is fragile, so we enhance them. Technology and skill combine to make the perfect wow. warrior. 
yet you don't participate in the cyber initiative. Curious, I am very intelligent. We live to serve, Grandmaster. What have you done? The perfect monsters. We may be loyal, but having our dicks chopped off is crossing the line. Before we get into the fight, one other thing I want to mention. Do the Lin Kui not care about our world? They clearly know about the invasion, based off of this line from Smoke. With our world attacking Earthrealm. But I guess satisfying their client is way more important than stopping aliens from ruling the world. They try to escape. Pocket sand. <laughs> then a fight between the Lin Kui members begin. Sector roots Qi Liang's legs, and then he tries to cut the rope. It looks really pathetic. He tries to freeze Cyrax, but fails, proving just how strong the cyber enhancements are. Missiles from Cyrax? Um, sure. I guess it's not too weird for robots to use missiles. Even though that was Sector's thing. Then they wombo combo smoke. Huai Liang tries to save him. They're gonna still explode, boom! <laughs> Oops. Then smoke gets cybernized. And Qi Liang is forced to escape. We then cut to Raiden and Shao Kahn consulting the Elder Gods. What is it you seek of the Elder Gods? OMG Matthew King again. Enough mind games and distractions. They ask the Elder Gods permission to hold the final tournament. And they agree. Raiden then asks for one more favor. I wish to enter the tournament. In order to join the tournament, Raiden has to give up his godhood and become mortal. Raiden becoming mortal is a great twist that we never did, but we're very excited to see it. Um, um, I guess they mean human Raiden participating in a Mortal Kombat tournament. You are a fool, Lord. No, just Raiden now, isn't it? You are a fool, Raiden. No, just Raiden now, isn't it? You are a fool, Raiden. No, just fool now, isn't it? You are a fool, fool. No. Just. Lord. Raiden comes back to the academy to give our heroes the news. We won't let you down, Lord Raiden. I hope not. Because I will be fighting alongside you. I'm not too sure why they treat this scene as a reveal. When we just saw him turn human three minutes ago. Perhaps originally they didn't show him turning human. Something like this. I wish to enter the tournament. It is called Mortal Kombat. Or have you forgotten? You are a god and... I do not have to be. It would make the reveal more effective. Then they go to Outworld. Let's go. But then, an unexpected visitor shows up. <laughs> I may have laughed a little too hard. I am impressed. You have escaped Netherrealm once again. It was surprisingly easy. I am sure Shinnok would like it to appear so. It actually was though. Shinnok gave him the escape portal. So now he has to hire the Lin Kui to catch him. So yes, he did make it surprisingly easy. Also, how did you know Shinnok was back? I guess he's just skips. He just knows everything. You are the only one who can open the door to the last Komidogu. You knew? You knew this was the key to the Kamidogu and not to Shinnok? I find it amusing. Raiden then explains the Kamidogu and the One Being. Remnants of the One Being. They split him and hid the pieces throughout the realms. And if Shinnok gets them all, the One Being will reappear and begin to unravel the realms until nothing is left. Did you catch that? If Shinnok gets the last Kamidogu, it'll be Armageddon. Everyone loses. Okay, okay, it's time to stop the tournament. Okay, stop the music! We need to stop the fighting amongst ourselves. If Shinnok wins. How did the Americans say? We all get fucked. It doesn't matter if Outworld wins if this other thing happens. So we're going to postpone the tournament to fight Shinnok, right? We're gonna stop the tournament, right? Nope. Instead of assisting Scorpion or asking him to come with them, Raiden tells him to fuck off and hope he doesn't get caught. And if they catch me, what then? Maybe I should open the door for them. End it all. Bitch please. Everything you did in Scorpion's Revenge helped the Earthrealmers. You try to be an anti-hero, but you are literally an angel sent from Heaven Realm. I believe that is what your wife and child would have wanted. 
you really are skips, you really do know everything that's going on. We then head to Outworld, where Shang Tsung greets them. Welcome to the fortress of Shao Kahn. They then head on inside to meet their contestants, Jade, Reiko, Baraka, Devora, Kintero, and... What the hell is this? Okay, so who's that? Is that... Is uh, that Melina? Shiba? No, that's not Shiba. She, does, she has two arms. That has to be Melina because she's wearing purple. That's Reiko! Oh my oh, goodness, they're bringing back Reiko Melina. again. I know, right? It shouldn't be. It but... doesn't say Melina. It gives me more... Sindel! No, that's not... <laughs> that's not Sindel! Um, she's giving me big Sindel energy. She reminds me of another character, Serena or something. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. Maybe they mentioned this character in the credits. Okay, okay, after some careful inspection, I have come to the conclusion that this lady is either Melina, Scarlet, or the second Devora. The only place that gets Lee May's name right on this DVD is the special features. Speaking of purple ladies, let's talk about the Melina controversy. Around June, Warner Brothers released a list of characters that will appear in the movie, and one of them was Melina. Then the movie came out, and she wasn't in it. <laughs> Melina stands were furious. And from what we've seen from Ed Boom's tweets, you don't want to anger the Melina stands. It's said that the marketing team mistook Lee May for Melina. Kind of like how I did at first. But I also feel like part of it is because she was in the movie. Melina never shows up. Ne yep, that's not because we didn't want her to show up. Right, we we, we did want her to show yeah. up. <laughs> I oh, think you animated, or you, you storyboarded We it. storyboarded some of it, yeah. It never really got finished. You recorded it, though. We did, yeah. we did, yeah. As far as, like, finishing up that edit and, and right. really really taking it to uh, completion. Release the Morales cut. <laughs> There's even concept art of her in the special features. Perhaps the marketing team was given the version with Melina in it, but she got cut last minute and replaced with Lee May. Regardless, Regardless. I think it's completely valid to be mad that Melina wasn't in this movie. And Reptile too. They are way more superior than any of the fighters here, but I guess it's cool to see some 3D era love. Oh, and before I forget, you know, I wonder where Reptile is when all this was happening? So, are you like, siblings? A couple? Or is this some sort of BDSM thing? Now that's a philosophical question, and I'd consider that more- OMG, Reptile, you're alive?! Huh? Um, yeah? We thought you were killed by Sonya Blade. My death was greatly exaggerated. Well, that's great news! Yeah. We heard the final tournament is starting! Will you be participating? Nope. Oh? And why is that? Well, I wasn't notified. Oh, well that's too bad. I guess I'm just not important enough in Shao Kahn's eyes. That is not true. They got the purple lady, Ermac. They picked the purple lady that nobody even remembers her name. Is he referring to Melina? We don't know. We think he was referring to Twilight Sparkle. They got Devora, the bug lady, who I'm pretty sure is a traitor and is working with Shinnok. <sighs> Shang Tsung's personal bodyguard since 1993, and now, I don't think I've talked to him for like, 10 years now. What is it? You have a nice cock. Excellent. It's like I'm tossed aside. Nobody cares about me. I just want Shang Tsung to notice me again. Love me, daddy! 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 Hey now, lighten up, Reptilian. There's always the next movie. Yeah! We can have our five second cameo and be killed off! Together! Ah, oh. uh, thanks guys. It's nice to have friends like you guys to cheer me up. By the way, what a fish! Fuck you, you tiny size bat! And now they are going to begin the tournament. What the fuck happened to your eyes, Jax? Our first fight is Devora vs. Johnny Cage. Where did Striker go? Unique New York, you know you need. And the fight begins. And the fight ends. Cassie is never gonna be born. <laughs> is, uh, between <laughs> these two she? movies. Devora's <laughs> like, why are you so pathetic? Luckily, Johnny has training from Sonya and gets back up. Um, are we going to talk about how Johnny learned the shadow kick between movies? No. Okay. okay, then Johnny loses, and my brother, being one of the only Devora fans out there, celebrates a W for the Bug, bug babe. babe, and an L for the asshole. Raiden, 
I hope you fare better than your champions. <laughs> and from this point on, the movie takes a complete turn. We have just lost cabin pressure. This is the point where people split in opinions. So we continue the tournament. <laughs> and that is the end of the first part of the tournament. Oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was that a bit too fast? Cause that's how I felt when watching the movie. Let me go through each fight slowly. Jadu, <laughs> Liu Kang. And they fight for a couple of seconds. And then Liu Kang just wins. Well that's it. She's just... She's just defeated. <laughs> oh. If you look at this scene right here, it looks like there's a couple of extra frames where Jade was about to retaliate. I think they cut out a chunk of the fight where Jade was fainting, so Liu Kang can give the finishing blow. Striker fights Baraka. Nom nom nom. Nom nom? <laughs> <laughs> Striker's like, get your fucking dick out of the way! Shotgun's like, it don't bite. Yes it do! Then Striker slams Baraka's face to the ground and breaks his teeth. Actual dental problems. Then we get to Melina vs Sonya. They spar for a bit, and Sonya tries to grab her boobs. Scarlet then shoots two sets of shurikens, yet Sonya only blocked one set. So technically it should look like this. Also, he threw five, yet Sonya only blocks two. Maybe she sucks at aiming? Then Sonya smashes Sindel into the ground, breaking her something. Oh, this actually is going really fast. The last fight is Quintero vs Jax, but it's less of a fight, and more of a dick measuring contest. Our daddy taught us not to be ashamed of our dicks, especially since they're such good size and all. Yeah, I see that. Your daddy gave you good advice. It gets bigger when I pull on it. Hmm. Sometimes, I pull on it so hard, I rip the skin. Then Shao Kahn says enough. Enough! Enough! That's enough. And that is the end of the first half of the tournament. Look at Liu Kang's derpy Duh. ass smile. Okay let me address the elephant in the room. Your favorite character just ate shit. They were advertised as if they were going to play an important part in the movie. Yet they barely fight for 10 seconds in the tournament. I knew walking into this movie, that they were just here to get beat up. The other hard thing is that I know each of these characters are somebody's favorite. And it's the same thing when we do superheroes. And it's a really hard thing to balance. And I'm fine with these characters losing. The movie wasn't about them. I just wish their fights were better, compared to the Baraka and Reptile fight in Scorpion's Revenge. Even though I had issues with them, at least they felt like actual fights. Here, it feels like a One Punch Man skit. Then we cut to Scorpion running away from Cyrax and Sector. And they are proving to be too much for Scorpion. What? Me too Scorpion. What? Last time you couldn't freeze the cyborgs. Now you can? Maybe he did a lot of VXP farming before coming here. And now Scorpion and Sub-Zero battle for a bit. Then Cyber Smoke suddenly appears. Oh, oh shit! Whoa, damn, this is, this is like a lot of teams. Smoke defeats Sub-Zero. Then they all gangbang Scorpion. Double-cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. Then they defeat Scorpion and take him away. I'd like to mention that I absolutely love this fight. It showcases just how threatening the Cyber and Kui truly are, making the case that the Grandmaster could be right to make this decision. Unlike in NRS games, where they're pretty much just jobbers, I also love how it's a free-for-all between Scorpion, the robots, and Sub-Zero. We cut back to the tournament, where Raiden fight Reiko. Nice! Where's your hammer, Rake? Quick, Rako, use your signature flip kick. <laughs> use your uppercut. Oh, no, 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 don't do that shit. No, I like seeing Rako actually be a competent fighter and not going like, oh, with the fucking hammer and shit. <laughs> Again, another solid fight. It showcases just how fragile Raiden is without his powers. We cut to the Temple of Elements. Sector just starts a fire like in the whole woods. <laughs> it just starts a California forest fire. <laughs> Place your hand on the door. You open this door. You've doomed us all. Shut the hell up, no one cares about your stupid ass opinions. Maybe you got rid of the old yee yee ass hair. Your girlfriend you looked like my mom! Me. 
and just as they are about to execute Scorpion, Sub-Zero saves him, I mean, tries to kill him himself, and they enter the temple. Then we head back to Outworld. Hey, where's the food court around here? Could also use a spa. So much for every pleasure you stated before Shant Sung. You can come to Outworld. We shall show you every pleasure. Mm. Then we get a two minute dumbass scene about Johnny learning about consent. That I'm just going to skip. Then we get to one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Liu Kang confronts Raiden about his fight earlier. And how he's worried about Raiden's current state. Raiden assures Liu Kang that he's fine. And that he is just getting used to his new body. He then adds a remark about how he's looking forward to sleeping. Cause he's never done that as an immortal before. And the scene ends with Liu Kang's concerned face. Throughout the series, Raiden has been the one who has to discipline and take care of Liu Kang. Here however, it's reversed. Now Liu Kang is worried about his mentor. Worried that he won't be able to take on the fights tomorrow. Perhaps Raiden knows this, but he doesn't want Liu Kang to worry. Even though he knows his fate is sealed. One other thing I liked is how excited he was to go to sleep. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. The Thunder God looking forward to experiencing something new is really wholesome. We head back to the temple and see Sub-Zero confronting Scorpion. They have a pretty fun fight, utilizing the elements referenced in Mortal Kombat mythologies. The robots disturb their lover's quarrel. Scorpion then proposes a truce. It would have been funny if Scorpion would just like, what, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> then they hit the robots and head into the final chamber. Sub-Zero tries to backstab Scorpion, but fails. Then Scorpion gives his Oscar speech. That's what makes you different. That's what makes you better. I know the desire for revenge. It's a sickness that eats at your soul until you become a monster of regret and pain. I deserve to die, and it would be fitting if you did it. So kill me if you must do it. I will never forgive you. Then they get ambushed by the cyborgs. Hashtag let Cyrax use the net. At this point I've given up differentiating them. I'm just going to call them Triborg. Brother, don't! You can't give it to them! How dare you betray our love for Scorpion? Goodbye Q.I. Hey, Lane. Tanisha, call your dog. We go back to the tournament, where we see Sonya beating up Devora. Thousands of Devora haters cheered that day. Then Jax gets defeated by Shao Kahn with a squeeze and a punch. Then we go to Striker vs Shant Sung. Striker gets beat up, and I think it's very unfair for policeman dude. They took away all of his gear. His gun, his baton, his taser, his flashlight, his dignity. No wonder he sucks here. Then Shang Tsung does his fatality. About to get his soul sucked. He's about to get his soul sucked. <laughs> and Striker dies. F's in the chat for Striker fans. Fun fact, that laugh you hear when he dies. <laughs> is actually Matthew Mercer himself. He hasn't seen the final product yet. His reaction to it all happened in real time. He was literally like, Oh my oh. god! And yeah, and started <laughs> laughing. It, it was such a funny progression that I was like, Oh my god, do you, do you guys have that? And they had recorded on that first pass. And that's in the film. When he rips his head off, you can hear someone in the crowd laughing. And that's him. <laughs> yeah. We then return to the temple that's about to collapse. And we get the most romantic scene in the whole movie. <laughs> Next we see Kung Lao vs Shao Kahn. Say the line, Bart! I'm Kung Lao, descendant of the great Kung Lao. Yeah! And Kung is really not living up to his name. Ah, look at the top of his head! Kung Lao throws his hat. Then Shao Kahn kills off Kung Leo MK9 trailer style. Oh. I guess you could say 
Fatality for Kung Lao. <laughs> <laughs> this moment pissed off many many fans. However, the creators did respond to their fans about this in the director's commentary. This is one of those things I know people are going, Yeah, I can't believe you! And it's like, dude! <laughs> you know? <laughs> Let me help you out there, buddy. I agree with him. I agree with that! I don't think just because a character is important or loved by fans means they can't die. Especially in the Mortal Kombat franchise, where violence and gore are the main selling point. The issue however, is that he is extremely poorly written. He has less than 6 lines of dialogue and yet the movie acts like we should feel emotional about this. I know he was like a brother to you. Really? Maybe you can actually show this to us in the film. Best friend tells us about how good of friends they were because showing that would have been far too difficult. Literally these two don't share a single line of dialogue in the movie. I felt more emotional for Artlene in the 1995 movie. And he's not even from the games. Even Kung Leo from the 2021 movie was better. As stupid as his death was, at least it had more impact to the story and the characters around him. Kung Lao's death here wasn't sad or emotional. It was frustrating, especially for Kung Leo fans. With that being said though, the creators also added an interesting note. We, we, you know, we have to go through and like, okay, who's gonna make it, who's not gonna yeah. make it. Those are discussions too that happen with yeah. Nether Realms. Blame them as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we see Raiden fighting Kitana. She got much stronger compared to when she fought Liu Kang. Or maybe Raiden just isn't a type. And just as Kitana is about to execute Raiden, do it, you bitch! The movie then does something that almost ruined the whole thing. What? No, 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 no! Oh. Uh oh. Oh, shit. Wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Uh. Uh. No. Queen of Outworld. Wait, 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 wait! As rightful heir, I hereby what? surrender to Earthrealm. No. Stop! Wait. Yeah. Reality is often <laughs> disappointing. What the fuck? <laughs> I think just okay. okay, let me break this down one by one. I think one of my favorite things about this whole scene is that Shao Kahn pretended to die. He's pulling a prank or something. Jade turns super tiny. Kitana points to the Earth Realm as next to her, even though they were just at the audience stand. And then Shao Kahn turns out not to be dead. Shao Kahn isn't dead, just blinded. You should've gone for the head. You should've gone for the head. <laughs> All of this turned one of the worst scenes in the movie into unironically the funniest one. Like the movie commits so hard to being over the top and stupid that it stops being bad and loops back around to actually being good. I really don't know what they were doing here. This rivals the scene where Quan Chi puts poison in Shang Tsung's drink right in front of him. Literal. It's green. <laughs> what? Then Shao Kahn beats up Katana, and we get a nice shot of Shao's ass cheek. Double cheeked up. <laughs> Next, we see Sonya using the spinning bird kick, and Shao Kahn takes five seconds to penetrate her, which she somehow recovers from for the final act. Shao Kahn doesn't kill her because he doesn't want to be harassed by Sonya's stands. Then we see Liu Kang versus Shang Tsung. I've been waiting a long time for this. Okay, thousand year old sorcerer waited a long time to fight Liu Kang. Even though it's been probably less than a year since the last tournament. Fight! Uh, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, next time maybe make Shao Kahn's loincloth a little longer. I don't need, I don't need that. <laughs> I don't need that in my subconscious. <laughs> Shang Tsung throws a flaming skull and runs so fast that after the skull hits Liu Kang, Shang instantly punches him. I expected better. I expected better. Then Shang infects Liu Kang's arm. I'm not too sure what's up with these movies and giving Shang Tsung new abilities. But this move in particular, the creators say something interesting. Uh, I'm trying to remember, this is part of the Mortal Kombat game too. It's part of his powers. He can infect people, basically. He can? I look through the games, and I'm really not too sure what they're referring to. I asked the boys about this, and this is what they told me. Brask said they're probably referring to dark magic. Snake said perhaps mind controlling Sindel and MK3 counts as infecting. And Dog says maybe it's his X-ray move in MK3. K9. Ah, oh, might it is. Thank you so much for the help, boys. 
then Liu Kang starts trying, and he demolishes Shan Tsung. Hey Shan, maybe if you stop specifically hitting his good arm, and go for the infected one, you'll start winning. Shan Tsung in a wheelchair, then Liu Kang chooses to spare him. Guess Striker isn't worth avenging for. I get they're going for the pacifist monk Liu Kang here, but all I can think of is how in Scorpion's Revenge, he decapitated someone's head and uses it like a soccer ball. Real great of you to leave Shan alive Mr. No Kill Policy Man. We cut to Netherrealm, where we see Shinnik with 5 of the Kamidogus. Chu Jinko must have been speedrunning conquest mode for Shinnik. The Lin Kui then bring the final Kamidogu to Shinnik. At last, final piece of the Kamidogu. The Kamidogu? If it is put together, the one being will come back. Yes. It is said the mad god Shinnok has searched. I feel like you should have started suspecting the moment Demon One hired you. I have your payment. In full. I prefer credit, thank you very much. Then Noob Saber, I mean, demons start attacking them. Then we cut to Raiden vs. Shao Kahn. <laughs> Even though Raiden has lost his lightning abilities, his leg work is still carrying him. Shao Kahn then beats up Raiden. He beats him up so hard that he turns back into a god for a second. Okay let me talk about something that annoyed me. The amount of times they showed the good guys gasping is way too much. No! No! Stop! Striker! No! <sighs> no! <gasps> no! Liu Kang! You Liu Kang! Lord Raiden! <laughs> Liu Kang is just constantly gasping. <gasps> if you read my book, calm the heck down! Then Raiden gets penetrated multiple times. <laughs> Last words. The Krabby Patty! Secret formula is- No! This is so sad. Jurgen was like a father to me. I loved him like my son. This is so sad. It's as if another character's death wasn't impactful enough. So they made this extra heartbreaking. Then we get a flashback scene. Your destiny was never to defeat Goro, Liu Kang. No, your destiny is to defeat Shao Kahn, the man whom Goro's boss serves and fears for his incredible might, the man who has maintained a mighty empire for over 10,000 years. I know that seems, as Johnny Cage would put it, ass backwards, but rest assured, your name will be in the title of the next movie, and that will give you the power and the plot armor you need to overcome the Emperor's incredible might. Now Liu Kang is ready to fight Shao Kahn, as our heroes teleport back to the audience stand. By the way, is anyone gonna take care of Raiden's body like they've been doing for every other fighter? No? Okay. Okay. Shao Kahn beats up Liu Kang so hard that both of his arms get infected. What the H? Why are there demons here? Don't you guys know your boss is trying to end the world right now? Then Liu Kang loses a clash. No! no! Kang. But then Liu Kang starts to believe. He's starting to believe. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to believe. That's how it works, right? And then proceeds to demolish Shao Kahn and wins. He did it! I did it. What the H is wrong with your mouth? And the audience begin to cheer. <laughs> I guess they just hate Shao Kahn that much. You did it. We did it. No, shut up. By the way, how is Raiden's body doing? <laughs> then the Elder Gods come down to congratulate Liu Kang and warn them about the upcoming threat. But we fear it may not be enough. For what? The one, one being. And that is the end of the movie, though they have some glaring issues. I would say it's decent- Wait, what? What do you mean- It's not over. What could they possibly continue? We cut back to Shinnik's Spire, where I'm sure the cyborgs have decimated the demon. I'm curious to see if Mr. Grandmaster can fight. Oh, come on. At least let him fight a little bit, mate. Seriously? Scorpion and Sub-Zero couldn't defeat them, and had to resort to running away. <laughs> 
Yet Tribal can't even defeat some demons? My headcanon is that the Cyber and Kui fought off thousands of demons, and then they ran out of batteries, which is why Scorpion and Sub-Zero only had to kill 5 demons. Hanzo has a she defeated an army of them. Heck, I bet even Johnny Cage could defeat them. Scorpion and Sub-Zero show up. I love how this guy dodges Scorpion's chain. They try to stop Shinnok, but they were too late. Being and then in... this is where we go crazy. I oh, <laughs> yeah. Stop! What is happening? The end of the realms. No. Stop! And from this point on, the movie makes a complete turn. We have just lost cabin pressure. Again. People can argue whether the last 65 minutes was good or bad. But everything from this point on is absolute garbage. Know your fucking place, trash! The Elder Gods tell you that he's Raiden's chosen one, so he can take them all inside him at once. So it's out. Go, what the f- what, what, what? Just like that. Yep. I mean, that's whatever. Liu Kang is kinda hot, yeah. not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was a Katana character arc speedrun. The Elder Gods infuse with Liu Kang. He's about to get so fucked. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and turns into Fire God Liu Kang. Or Golden Liu Kang. God Liu Kang. Liu Kang Prime, yeah. One of these. Then Kronika starts merging the timeline. I mean, the realms start to merge. And they head to the finale of Annihilation. Scorpion? I thought you were dead. Blame Ed Boon for loving me too much. Then they see the one being corrupted Shinnok. Hey, nice of you guys to cover his buns with some rock. <laughs> Fine cover. This is my fight now. Excuse me, <laughs> don't you mean, our fight? You have six elder gods in you. Not used to the Ermac way of talking yet. We are many more but infinity times infinity no payments. Then Liu Kang gets the flashback. Why am I the chosen one? Because I chose you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I feel like having a chosen one be a nobody is a fine idea. But then what was the whole point of the first two minutes of the movie? Batman Begins. Yeah, watch this remake again, except the uh, Tarkatan cuts the pearls. <laughs> <laughs> I thought those Tarkatans were chasing down Baby Kang. And why Raiden saved him was because he was the chosen one. But I guess they were just random bloodthirsty Tarkatans. And Raiden saved Baby Kang cause he's just too cute. Also, I'm fine with fireballs and bicycle kicks. But to be able to fly and do Super Saiyan moves. And then he goes, Super Saiyan. <laughs> That's a little too much for me, especially for a chosen one that isn't born with powers. He's believing his destiny now. Believe! Then Liu Kang turns into a fucking dragon. No! Stop! Let's go kaiju fights. <gasps> Yo! Yo, I was joking about the kaiju fight, dude. What the fuck is- <laughs> I know I'm the scaly guy who likes scaly stuff. But this is too refunding ridiculous. This is re goddamn ridiculous. Also, this dragon design is kind of meh. It looks like a weak gecko. The Elder Gods have great Eastern dragon designs. Heck, Liu Kang has a better looking dragon design in the special features. All I'm saying is, as a scaly enjoyer, I'm quite disappointed. Can't get reptile. Can't get a good looking dragon. Fuck this movie. What the fuck? My thoughts exactly, Johnny. Sonya then shows something. We open my luggage. You had that the whole fucking time? Striker went in the tournament with no weapons. And you had all of this. His death is on your hands. Blondie. Then they try to save people in this place that doesn't make any sense. We then see Tarkatans. What? What do you mean Tarkatans? Do they hate humans so much or something? We later see them marching with the demons. So they are working for Shinnok. Why? Why the fuck would the Tarkatans want to end all of existence? Suicide is badass! Then we see Jax helping out the military. Fun fact, those tanks are never used. They are just for decoration. Well, what are you waiting for, an invitation? Fucking Matthew King again. They must really really like his voice or something. Please, you embarrass me. Then we see Johnny Cage and Sonya fighting off some Tarkatans, and then Baraka shows up. Or maybe that's not Baraka, cause the last time we saw him he lost his teeth. So, this is Baraka. Baraka penetrates her, and Johnny pushes him away. I love you. 
Football. Then Johnny shoves a grenade into Baraka's mouth, breaking his teeth, again, and killing him. How does it feel Baraka fans? In Scorpion's Revenge, he doesn't land a single hit onto Johnny, then dies, then gets retconned back into this movie, to get beat up by Stryker, and die for a stupid romance plot. I think the characters, if they're the actual characters from the game, should get a, a, probably a little more, you know? Yes. <laughs> I kind of don't trust Jeremy anymore. If what happened to Baraka is considered giving them a little more, in the next movie, Scorpion and Sub-Zero will kill off Reptile and make out on his dead body. Then we cut back to Liu Kang versus the one being. Get Randy Orton slithering oh, watch, like out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Things aren't looking good for our little dragon boy. They gave him a nosebleed. La Mao. No! no! Okay. no! Stop! There's not really anything they can do about what Luke right, Kang's dealing right, with. Right, yeah, you're not gonna fight. So. From not being able to freeze robots, to being able to stun the dimension shifting entity. This is some impressive anime character art growth. Scorpion and Sub-Zero throw zone to the one being. Scorpion plays God of War, while Sub-Zero plays Roller Coaster Tycoon. Then Scorpion says the line. Say the line. Get over here. What do you mean get over here? Get your ass back here. Do you want to physically pull the 1B into you? Scorpion breaks his gem. Then a giant explosion happens. <laughs> Going to take that ass back home. I will never forgive you. Sadly, the one being is still alive. All that for a drop of blood. His gem isn't even broken in some scenes. Liu Kang comes back to fight, using his adorable tiny claws. Nom. <laughs> Nom. <laughs> it's a little kick. A little kick. The one being grabs Liu Kang's tiny arm and starts his victory speech. But because he wasn't gripping onto Liu Kang hard enough, he just escapes and eats his arm. What do you mean? You don't deserve this. You are the embodiment of the realms. Why the fuck do you care about status? You don't deserve this. I don't care! Vor, 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 vor. Then Liu Kang turns back to Golden Liu Kang. Here it is, Big Kangus, Big Kangus, Big Kangus. <laughs> big, Big Kangus, Big Kangus, Big Kangus. <laughs> vor, vor, vor. There's such a Kirby quality to this image too. Kirby, Kirby, Kirby. And then Liu Kang soul sucks the one being. Then Liu Kang separates the realms. You missed one. I count five. We return to the Outworld Coliseum. I'm really curious to how the audience would react to what just transpired. <laughs> Liu Kang explains that the realms have been separated. And that there are no more gods. No more tournaments, no more gods. Which really fucked up the Mortal Kombat universe. Sonya kisses Johnny. Whoa! Whoa! <gasps> hey! Weren't you just penetrated in two different spots? Are you Wolverine or something? Then we get a red and cheese. And that is the end of the movie. Here's how I felt after finishing the film. I have so much I want to say. Let me start by asking this question. What the hell can they do next? They kind of did the end game of the MK universe. Just peace as it should be. Yeah, I've heard that before. We added the little Jax line because we wanted to make a bookend to the two movies we were allowed to do. We wanted to encompass as much mythology as we possibly could. This is the logical conclusion to these two stories. But then, of course, there's always some place to go. Let me try to brainstorm. Liu Kang saying no more gods is very important. Not only does it mean the elder gods and the one being are gone, but also, Liu Kang has lost his godlike powers. I personally think they still do the MK3 invasion plot. The difference this time being Adenia is back, and Sindel has to be retconned. Again. Though, will the people of Outworld agree to this invasion? Ah! They seem pretty happy to see Shao Kahn gone. Shao Kahn and Shang Tsung are probably going to create Ermac and Melina. We had a whole thing with him and Melina. Yep, a whole thing end. with Melina and, and clones and all that stuff. While Quan Chi and Shinnick are gone, I still feel like we might see Noob Sabot. Huai Liang will probably become the next Grandmaster. Scorpion will either become a Ronin, or he'll join the Lin Kui. 
Sub-Zero better make his move on that ass in the next movie. Dark Raiden will probably show up. Onaga will probably show up or be mentioned. I'm excited to see the real reptile. And then I don't care about the rest. I don't care! People are gonna be like, but how would they do another... C Listen, well, I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can always find a way to do another tournament if, they, if this did well. There's always a way. There's always a way. With all this being said, it does feel like they threw a bunch of stuff they don't know what to do with to the third movie. Like the Outworld fighters not dying. Shao Kahn's disappearance. But with an ending as epic as this one. People are probably either left disappointed, or satisfied. They aren't really invested to watch a third movie. I personally am looking forward to a third movie, because I have no clue what they could be doing now, and that intrigues me. Also, I want to see Reptile. What'll happen is that what while all this stuff has been going on, Shujinko's been running around in the background, and somehow, even without the Kamidogu stuff, he's gonna end up unwittingly bringing back Onaga. Onaga will come back, with Sindel as his bride, because she was his wife before Shao Kahn, and, Ka uh. <laughs> and and she's just evil, and she probably kills Onaga and takes his power at the end and becomes like Dragon Queen Sindel, and then <laughs> kills Katana. <laughs> Melina's, Melina's with her. And oh then, my god, don't give uh, up ideas! Sonya is the one who defeats her, because, you know, let's make her more OP again. And Johnny Cage is just there in the background. I, I swear, guys, I can fight! And it's like, shut up, John McHale. <laughs> Go, go back to community or whatever the fuck. Next I want to talk about some stuff they set up in Scorpion's Revenge that they tried carrying over to Battle of the Realms. Let's start with Johnny Cage. In Scorpion's Revenge, he started off as a buffoon, but then was revealed to be really strong, proving the phrase. How did the Americans say? Don't judge a book by its cover. However, in Battle of the Realms, he's back to becoming a buffoon that needs help and can't even beat up Bug Babe. I heard some people weren't really happy about this, however, as a Johnny hater, I liked him eating shit. I especially liked the characters in the movie finding him annoying too. A little airy for my taste, but- Never mind. Kill him. He is obviously mentally unwell. Johnny Cage. Ugh. Ow! She's defending my honor. Next I'll talk about Scorpion. Scorpion throughout the game franchise is an anti-hero, and they try to do this in these movies too. You have long straddled the fence between light and dark, Hanzo. It is time you pick a side. However, seeing as every action he did was helping the good guys, he's basically a superhero. While I don't really like Angel Scorpion, this is more of an issue in Scorpion's Revenge, so I didn't really mind this in Battle of the Realms. The other thing I wanted to mention was the whole revenge struggle. Scorpion tells Sub-Zero how revenge is bad. I know the desire for revenge. It's a sickness that eats at your soul until you become a monster of regret and pain. And I know he's saying this cause he regrets killing Bihan. But then what of Quan Chi? Was that justice? Or revenge? For the longest time I've been pondering this question. And I think I have a good theory. He originally just wanted to help the good guys, but it then devolved into revenge. Put up more of a fight than your wife did. Scorpion and his kind of internal battle of, am I good, am I evil? I believe he wanted to let go of his revenge, but he just couldn't at the last moment. Which all sounds great and poetic, but again, my biggest issue is still the Shang Tsung scene. Shang gave Scorpion to choices and he had to sacrifice something no matter what. Now Scorpion is presented with two choices. Either kill Liu Kang and get his revenge, or help Liu Kang and save Earthrealm. The cliche choice would be to save Earth. The darker choice would be revenge. But then he just gets both, making this conflict really weak. I wanted to see consequences for his actions. Killing Bi Han resulted in Qi Liang's revenge. But what did Scorpion suffer for killing Quan Chi? The only thing I can think of was dying, but even that didn't happen. And lastly, I want to talk about Liu Kang. I just love the moral of this story, um, which is, cut to, I'll think about it, hold on. In Scorpion's Revenge, Liu Kang gives some of the most cliche protagonist lines in the movie. What makes you so sure you will win? Because I have something no one in our world has. What? Hope. If Lord Raiden believes we can make it, we can. My will is strong. My destiny is my own. I am not as weak as you, Shao. 
So I was more than happy to see Goro wipe that smug gas face Dang. off of him. So how does this new conflict affect Liu Kang in Battle of the Realms? He continues to believe. I just have to believe. And wins. Believe. 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 I believe I can fly. Believe. Believe. Ignoring this lame-ass character arc, Goro's beatdown didn't seem to matter in this movie. No character mentions this. Lord Raiden. The chosen one. Nor does Liu Kang seem to be affected by this. The only time this is brought up is a flashback he has before fighting Shao Kahn. Your destiny was never to defeat Goro, it was to defeat Shao Kahn. Yeah. No shit. I don't think Liu Kang needs a reminder of his destiny to fight Shao Kahn. Liu Kang is positioned in the previous film as not being up to par with his game counterpart. He couldn't beat Goro, whereas the game version beat Goro and Shang Tsung, then would go on to defeat Shao Kahn, obviously increasing levels of power. But here it's positioned as if Liu Kang wasn't supposed to beat Goro, but it's supposed to beat Goro's boss's boss, and that makes sense. The only way that could work would be extensive training for Liu Kang, which obviously they don't have the time to show, but the least they could have done is had a, a brief montage at the start. So maybe instead of wasting time on that flashback with Liu Kang's parents being murdered by Tarkatans, what they perhaps should have done is had that whole sequence be Liu Kang reflecting on the previous film and training with Kung Lao to get some dialogue in because, you know, the two are supposed to be best friends and Kung Lao's death is supposed to motivate Liu Kang, but they don't talk to each other in the entire film. So they could have done this, killed multiple birds with one stone, had a much cooler sequence that sets up Liu Kang's training that he has become better. Instead of just being, he just randomly gets the power after Raiden and Kung Lao both died against Shao Kahn. Did Raiden give Liu Kang an arcana by just talking to him and saying, you're, you're my chosen hero? This film is AIDS. One way I heard about this was that this makes Liu Kang more of an underdog. But then this scene exists. <laughs> there. Now he's an underdog. Now I'm going to get onto my final review. Let me start with some positives. The gore is still excellent. The first 30 minutes of the movie was decent. The beginning war scene, setting up the tournament, Scorpion State, and the Lin Kui side plot did get me intrigued for what's to come. I love the Cyber Lin Kui fights. They legitimately solidified themselves as a threat. Shao Kahn is a pretty good villain. He's a badass unstoppable raid boss. That truly felt like a hurtful for our heroes to surpass. And finally, my favorite thing about this movie, Raiden. Yeah, no shit. I wasn't the biggest fan of him in Scorpion's Revenge. He gave okay advices, and he couldn't really do much cause he wasn't in the tournament. In Battle of the Realms however, he does way more. He actively tries to help the humans with fighting, making decisions, and sacrificing his godhood to join the tournament. And my favorite thing about him is his struggles with becoming mortal. I actually felt something for this character. Funny how my favorite and least favorite thing about both Mortal Kombat films in 2021 are the same thing. I find it amusing. Now on to the negatives. I have three main points as to why I disliked Scorpion's Revenge, and I feel like bringing them back will perfectly convey my issues with this movie. The characters. It's one thing to have lackluster boring characters, but to have over 20 of them is my main issue. Giving us 6 new outworld villains and not developing them? Fine. But to then have most of your heroes not have good character development is kinda embarrassing. This is the exact same issue I have with MK2021. Shoving in a bunch of characters in your movie for fan service promotion, and not giving them any good character development, then killing them off. They gave more screen time to Johnny Cage and Sonya's stupid romance, then lines for Kung Leo. I am Kung Lao, descendant of the great Kung Lao. It is you. Sticking to one story. In Scorpion's Revenge, I didn't really like how they kept splitting the story between Scorpion and the Earth Realmers, but it's worse in Battle of the Realms. At least Scorpion was in the tournament in the first movie. The Lin Kui subplot barely has any involvement with the tournament. It feels like I'm watching two different movies at the same time. 
do you have any idea how many times I cut back and forth from each plot in this video? We then cut to Hanzo, then we cut to the Linkui, we then cut to Raiden, then we cut to Scorpion, we cut back to the tournament, we cut to the Temple of Elements, then we head back to Outwarl, we head back to the temple, we go back to the tournament, we then return to the temple, next we see Kung Leo, we cut to Netherrealm, then we cut to Raiden, we cut back to Shinix Spire. If you read my book, calm the heck down! In MK9, there were many side plots, saving Sonya, the Linkui, Kitana's Ark, while being their own stories, at least they were all involved with the tournament in some way. The Linkui subplot is interesting, but I feel like it would work much better as its own movie. The tournament. Finally, I can proudly say that they actually got this right. No more Battle Royale BS, just a normal ass 1 vs 1 tournament. But now there's a new problem, because the animation has noticeable mistakes, and the fights here are worse than the first. So weirdly enough, I actually prefer the first tournament. <laughs> but I don't like Normal ass tournament. Then why did you ask for it? I hate that tournament, but it's just done better and more entertaining than this one. So to prove that I'm not just nitpicking and biased towards the animation in this movie, I decided to ask a professional on what they think about the animation in Battle of the Realms. Hello everybody, my name is True Underdog, and it's true, I studied 3D animation before my YouTube channel really took off. I've won several animation competitions and even got the top animator award at my university. And at that university, I studied under Matthew Tovar, who did most of the cutscene animations for The Last of Us and the Uncharted series, so pretty big deal, I was super lucky that he was there at the time. But without any further ado, let's break down some crappy animation in Battle of the Realm. We're gonna look at when Shao Kahn just decimates Katana, because that scene has some hilarious animation mistakes. Let's get right right into it. So honestly, the first part's kind of cool. We get this ridiculous blur effect. Now, the characters themselves don't actually move very much. If I go frame by frame, there's almost no 2D animation, but the ripple effect helps to hide that, which is a pretty good money-saving strategy. I'm not gonna lie, you save time on animation when you can incorporate 3D effects like that. It's a good idea. Oh man, she looked kind of funny. Look, there's two of her. There's two of her. I'm glad I paused at just that moment. At some point during the animation, the artist just drew two of her. I don't know if they were trying to create some cool blur effect or what, but it only lasts for like one frame, so it didn't achieve any sort of real effect. I think it was just a mistake, and look at his fist, it's so big here. And as you're about to see, it's never that big again in any of the scenes, and there is an animation principle known as solid drawing, and for solid drawing, you don't want to mess up the volume or size of your characters, you want it to be consistent. And for this scene especially, that principle is completely stomped on, like it's never consistent at all. And also, look at Katana before she's punched, she looks entirely different, so I think they definitely hired some in-between artists, which is normal, but they had so many different in-between artists that the style is never consistent for some scenes. Thankfully, this part only lasts for a couple of seconds, but still, she looks entirely wrong for a split second there. And now let's go ahead and keep going frame by frame here, because once again, we see two! There's two katanas once again. Let's keep going frame by frame. At one point, her bra just disappears too. Once again, two katanas, and look at that. Her bra just goes away completely for a couple of frames. No idea why, but once again, way too many in-between artists being hired here. And look at Katana's pose right here, because it's not going to change for about 10 frames. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, it barely changed there, so you get the idea. They made Katana hold that pose forever as they zoomed out. Once again, a pretty good trick that works very well for digital animation, because you're hoping the audience is focusing on Shao Kahn, or maybe the beautiful environment. This film has some beautiful backgrounds for most of the scenes. I wonder if that's where most of the budget went. And now let's check out Shao Kahn. Once again, they barely animate him. He gets one pose, and then they pretty much just move him across the screen. He doesn't really change very much, and Katana too, she's gonna hold this pose the entire time, check her out. She's like never going to move. Well, she'll move, but she won't change pose, and Shao Kahn won't change pose very much either until he actually punches her. I think he has no in-betweens, yeah, he goes from here to here, there's not a single in-between, and Katana has stayed, like, still that entire time. They just hold this pose for so long, they really want you to keep up with the action, boom, once again, not really any in-betweens, just go straight to the hat. <laughs> to show the power. You know, normally you'd want like five more drawings in between these two poses, or at least a couple <laughs> of him bringing his fist down, but he hits her, a nice blur effect to hide any animation, she hits the ground, and then we have some decent animation actually right here for the character moments. Typically, believe it or not, animating like subtle parts like this is tougher than animating action sometimes because the action happens so quickly. All right, but now we have my favorite part, when Shao Kahn hits Katana, and not because I hate Katana, I actually love Katana. All right, I just love the animation that happens here. So for starters, 
his forearm isn't connected correctly to his body, it wouldn't be at that angle. And right here, once again, we don't even see the impact. The camera's gonna trick us here. They're gonna zoom out really quickly and add a sound effect to make you think that a hit has happened, but no contact was actually made. <laughs> And once again, as the camera zooms out, the characters just hold their pose. And then Katana does this sick flip animation, or at least it would be sick if there weren't a ton of mistakes made. But I appreciate the fact that they went for it, <laughs> but she just keeps flipping. And look at her back, it's like broken at this point. My back! And honestly, the flip itself isn't terrible. It, it's, it's okay, like it's serviceable. But the best part is when she hits the ground, because watch this, her flip momentum just stops completely. For this part, I want to do slow motion, and I'm going to try to keep up with the action and describe it to you. So watch her flip. She hits the ground, she loses all momentum, goes straight up, goes flat, and then just lands straight down. You can tell they definitely had like three key poses and then hired some people to do the in-betweens and they weren't aware of the momentum. They just had her go down, up, to down, and that's it. They didn't have any sort of spinning keep going. And honestly, if I was them, I would have kept the flip and then just cut away to a different shot where she hits the ground and slides or something. That would have saved a lot of money. You could have used like one pose of her on the ground, just slide, and draw in some like dust effects from the ground and like that's it. It would have been completely fine, but instead, we got this super goofy bounce animation. And Shao Kahn doesn't move, by the way. There is no recovery, no follow through. He just keeps that pose the entire time. Check it out. He just holds it. Because again, all the focus is on Katana here, and that's fine, but he's also framed incorrectly. You'd think you'd want him over here. That way he's in one third of the screen and she's in a different third. Now we have all this weird negative space over here where nothing's happening. A lot of empty space. And then he finally recovers, almost like he was flabbergasted by that animation. He's like, wow, I hit her so hard that she lost all physics when she hit the ground. <laughs> Then the guards just come in and they drag her off, and I think she like, yeah, she, she animates okay. They just drag her off in one frame. Like, they animate, but she keeps the same pose, and that's okay, I guess. Again, this film clearly was losing budget at a certain point, but I just wanted to show y'all the amazing flip, because it's so funny. I've never seen a better example of no physics. Now, all right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown from a former animator who still studies animation and practices to this very day. I just don't do it professionally. So I hope you enjoyed, and uh, continue on to the rest of the video. Take it away, Sonic XD! <laughs> And finally, the worst thing about this movie, the last 13 minutes, there are rumors that suggest the movie got rushed, didn't have enough budget, but no matter the case, they were doomed for one reason, they wanted the one being ending. When we got to the third act, I wanted to blow it open in a way that was unexpected. Something that I don't think you've ever really seen in a Mortal Kombat, and uh, I was happy that Netherrealm was on board with sort of going that direction. They were so proud of this plot line that they thought this was going to be the highlight of the movie. My hope too is that fans will just lose their minds over the fact that we went this far into the mythology. I mean, this is kind of bananas. Big dragon fight, big kaiju, <laughs> and it's like, well, you wouldn't think that that would be the, the way that a Mortal Kombat film would end. Right. But, but you I know like what? that it's unexpected in that way. And in some way, I commend them for this ambition. This was fun. It's our big, dumb action film. Right. Know? I hope you enjoyed this crazy-ass film as much as we <laughs> enjoyed making it. With that being said, though, this might be worse than Annihilation's ending. I had my worries when seeing the one being on the list of characters who will show up, and I didn't expect it to be this bad. I, I do, do not need a kaiju fight in my Mortal Kombat film. Yo, I was joking about the kaiju fight, dude. What the fuck is... <laughs> I DON'T WANNA SEE THAT SHIT! Nor do I want the one being as the final boss. The fourth snake made a great video talking about this. If all the realms are merged and the one being is revived, that's it. The universe ends. There is no coming back from that and you cannot fight this thing. They really went all out here. They really want to end this with a bang. But all they did was betray the fans that love Scorpion's revenge. And now those same fans are gonna heavily doubt your next movie. Alright, enough trashing on this film. Let me end this on a positive note. Would I recommend this movie? In a very weird way. Yes. Raider! I have a general grasp on how people feel about each Mortal Kombat movie, but everyone's opinion on this is so scattered. The good, the bad, and the what the fuck. I remember when I first finished this movie, I was in awe. My brain couldn't comprehend what just happened. So much so, that I actually gave the movie a 6 out of 10. I'm gonna give this a 6 out of 10. Oh! What the hell? What the fuck? And it's this feeling that I had, is why I recommend this movie. Even though I still think that's a bad movie. Even though it's worse than Scorpion's Revenge. It's still a very different Mortal Kombat film for good and bad reasons. And that's what makes it an interesting experience, and why I recommend it for MK fans. Or maybe I just want you all to suffer like I have. Overall, this is a movie with some good, 
and a lot of bad, and I hope they could redeem themselves in the third movie. I want to see Reptile. Thank you all so much for watching, and remember. How did the Americans say? Opinions are like assholes. Mine are right. <laughs> it's a me. A Mario. And thank you so much for watching this video. Right when I finished watching the movie, I knew I was gonna have a blast making the sucks video. Just due to how much this movie gives for material wise. The good, the bad, and the what the hell. And for some reason, every time I make one of these sucks videos, I just feel like I have to one-up myself from last time. And boy, did I try. <laughs> With like, more skits. YouTubers collabing my video. I learned Source Filmmaker just to do like a silly poker scene. This video is somehow longer than my MK2021 sucks video. Actually, this video might even be longer than the Battle of the Realms movie itself. <laughs> uh, I definitely feel like I bit off more than I could chew. Believe it or not, I was actually planning on adding like 10 or 20 more minutes of just nitpicking and complaining, but I decided to cut that out because I feel like the video is going a little too long. And if some of the creators of the film are watching this, I'd just like to say, no hard feelings, man. You guys still tried your best and you made a really, really interesting film, I will say. And just take my video as like a random fan's criticism and what he thought did did work and didn't work and I wish the best of luck for a third movie if that's gonna happen <laughs> now for this next part I'm just gonna thank all the people who helped me out in this video because there were a lot a lot of help that I had and I'm just gonna try my best to speed run through all this thank you to BK hat again for drawing the amazing artworks for me she had to suffer and look up a lot of butts to get Raiden and reptile perfect so I really really appreciate that oh and uh, just so you guys know this picture right here was drawn by yours truly. Yes. <laughs> and I would like to say I'm pretty proud of myself for coming up with this masterpiece. <laughs> if you guys want to see HD resolutions of these meme pictures, come and check them out on my Discord server. And I'll also post them on Twitter later on. And to promote my own server, I'm going to be having new emojis from this video. Woo! Thank you to True Underdog and The Fourth Snake for having a cameo in my video again. And this time it's a, a lot longer of a cameo. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time to film and do analysis stuff for a part of the video and yeah thank you guys so much for the help we don't even get like a little bit where Raymond's like here take these nunchucks i want to thank brusque poet for hosting the watch party for battle of the realms and allowing me to use the reactions not gonna lie, I think Brusk Poet kind of carried this video in some senses. Him and his friends, not only did they provide amazing reactions, but some of the reactions they did, I took them and just used it as jokes in the video. Honestly, a huge portion of the jokes and funny bits in this video were just thanks to Brusk and his fans. So thank you so much for the help there, Brusk Poet, and uh, it was a lot of fun watching the movie with you guys. Thank you to Pyro Chomper again for giving me the director's commentary. I really appreciate that. I really love listening to what they have to say. And not gonna lie, Pyro, you may have single-handedly helped me debunk the Reptile and Baraka conspiracy because that one image with Baraka and the special features helped me out so much with my point. And I just thank you so much for getting that for me. And finally, because I don't want to drag this on for too long, I just want to put all the other creators that I want to thank on screen. You guys are amazing and thank you so much for all the help you have provided. So what's next for this channel? Uh, honestly, a little shaky with what I'm planning, but I will say hopefully next week I got one more Battle of the Realms related video coming up and then I'll probably do a Best of Sonic Galaxy 2021. Then I will actually do another voting video so you guys can vote for what you want to see next. And this is going to be very important because I don't think there's really anything coming out that's Mortal Kombat related in the next year. Whatever is voted here, I'm probably just going to go straight to it and do it next. You want to see me talk about MK9? You want to see me talk about Injustice? You want to see me talk about 1995 movie? Now's your chance. Uh, random thought. I want to do an Elden Ring video, and I want to call it Shang Tsung Plays Elden Ring, where I make my character look like Shang Tsung and have him use like Shang Tsung moves like in the game and or, like try to find them and stuff like that. I think that'd be kind of fun, but I don't know if you guys want to see that or not. I, I just thought to throw it in here. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I feel like I've spent a lot of effort within these past two months just non-stop everyday six hour editing just to try my best to get this out as soon as possible. I wanted to get this out before the end of the year, but I'm not too sure if I'll make it or not, depending on your time zone. <laughs> and I'm hoping next year will be even more fruitful and eventful and shenanigans i don't know <laughs> i hope you guys are having a wonderful new year's and i will see you guys in 2022 laters
By the way, Sonic Hoxty learned Source Filmmaker within three days just so we can do Fortnite dances. Wait, what? Sonic, you piece of shit!